smart move not to test the power again. Goes right to wrestling and applies the wrist lock. But Flight, in a hurry, comes up with a hammer lock. Goes out the back door, does jet, and a side headlock applied by Mr. Hot Stuff himself. Not sure he really has the body weight to apply that hold properly. He's gonna have to look into it quite a bit more to make that effective. Meanwhile, Nate just powering comes up with a side headlock of his own. Jet fires him off, drop down. Uh oh! The ropes just a little bit, but he manages to regain his, his balance and his time. Nice arm drag. And that's a sign of angry experience. Getting tangled up on those ropes could have thrown a lot of people off. But Nate Flames knew exactly what to do. Regained that time in just a matter of seconds. And still maintain the advantage. Hot stuff. Caught Flames. On the way back to the ring, got the elbow and another one. Right hand by Jaden Jack, followed by a knife edge chop in the corner. Comes hot stuff all the way across. And Snapmare takes Nate Flames down. Kick to the spot of my heart. Just a barrage. Why hot stuff who only got a two count there? Another elbow drop. She now seems to be working on the shoulders. First two lock applied. See if you can tell exactly where that knee is planted. I don't know how hard he's pulling on that chin though. Obviously not hard enough. You gotta really lean back when you're applying that help, particularly when you lack the body weight. This game check does. Nonetheless, Jet still with control. And a nice vertical suplex supplied. A little slow, however. Nate's the type of guy you can't waste time with. Well, either apply the hold or not. Once again, Jet has been wasting a lot of time. Referee checking to see if Nate wants to quit. I don't know, we saw earlier he wasn't really pulling back on that reverse chin lock. I can't quite see from this vantage point. Flames is not quitting, and he's reached the ropes. Well, now Jaden was laying it in there, reeling back. It was a little late now, because he had to break it. Flames just got out of the way. Big clothesline, head up the combo. They come back here, and a corner clothesline as well. Oh, wow. Count your teeth, Jaden Jack. The cover hooks the leg. One, two, but only a two count. Neither one of these individuals want to start their new year with a loss here at Odd Bodies. As this is XVW's first event of the year 2022. A nice kick to the side of the head by Jet. Oh! First rush kick. Close to the cover. Hook the leg. That could be it. He got him!
to our main event. Referee checking both individuals. Travis Alexander, Prophet of course, losing the tag team championship at our last event and losing his tag team partner, which is why he was announced as the last high time stand. Now facing Noah Lee, the two man tie Lee with the weight advantage easily comes up with that But again, we see where that size advantage comes into play with that Nice hip lock, however. And an arm drag by Prophet. Prophet immediately goes to work on that arm. Of course, that's how he defeated his former, his now former tag team partner the last event with that arm bar. What do you like to focus on? Uh oh, just a glancing blow with that drop kick really caught the jaw. But another arm drag, 
goes back to work on that arm. Maybe that's all he was intending. Just to catch him off guard a bit. Go back to work on that arm. Whatever it was, it came out to his advantage. Suicide dive, but got caught. And now Noah Lee throws Puppet back inside the ring. Well, they attempted to slow the right pace down. A series of forearm shots coming straight down. You know, that's gotta hurt. Only a two count for that cover. Not follow it up, however. Rubbing forearm to the back. See what he's going to do next. I don't know if I'm uh, following his strategy. Looks like a headbutt, forearm to the back, then it work on the neck. Now it looks like he's working there. You got to pick one part of the body and stay focused on it, like Cross was with the arm. If you're going from one part of the body to the other, you're not going to do enough damage. I have to question the strategy by Noah Lee, but he's certainly connected with that clothesline. Short of the clothesline at that. One, two, and only a two count. At least he is swinging the leg, however. Again, you got to stay focused on one part of the body to weaken your opponent. Now he's just choking with the bullet as the referee lays the count on him. Another forearm shot in the corner. I just ripped him up. And Poppet, oh, oh, he caught him with that knee in the bread basket. And Poppet does not have a lot of beef down there. Nice suplex. Easily executed by Noah. He goes for the cover again. Hooks the leg referee. A little bit out of position. But I don't think he would have gotten a 1 2 3 there yet. Again, it's a matter of staying focused on the body. Something that Noah Lee has not done thus far in this match. Head first from the turnbuckle. Nice fix, chop. into the midsection. And again, it just seems like Noah Lee's attack is all over the place. Uh oh And that shoulder went into that steel board. That's the one that was being worked on earlier. Fight off. With a flying forearm. And a tip up. And look at it, it goes right back to that arm. The one that has now been injured as it hit that post. Oh, wow! Further damage done. One, two. Only a two count, however. That was exactly as I was speaking of earlier. Prophet's been focused on that arm throughout that entire... Oh, but he got caught there. Up on the shoulders now. Manages to come out the back door somehow and takes the wheels out from underneath. And now going to work on that up the arm bar applied. That's the one that was damaged. And now he's tapping. Here is your winner and in to the main event, Travis Alexander. Profit, you're a man. You're a winner in advancing to the main event, I should say. Focused on that arm drop that entire night. Of course, he was aided a bit by that steel post. Through no fault of his own. You're a victor nonetheless. And now moving on to our main event here tonight. And hopefully Noah Lee will take care of that arm. 
Who knows what amount of damage was done by that steel post. Two matches in already at XCW. Holiday hangover. Prophet looks like he's got a little bit of hangover here. It was definitely a hard fight. Travis Alexander Prophet. Well, no concussion. He remembers his name. And we've got a lot more action to come.
checking out Mr. By the Book. Check out Nathan. Nathan, hey, he'd be the one I'd be worried about. There's the bell, this one officially underway. This is the Kermit Challenger number three for the next gen championship. He's been pushed back in the corner by the rule. A nice clean break by Mr. By the Book. Oh, that's why he's Mr. By the Book. He's waiting for him right in the center. Now the tie up again. Takes him from behind. A nice reversal by McLean. No slouch inside that ring. Nice escape by the road. As I was saying, McLean, no slouch in the ring. He may not be the most uh, pleasant of individuals, but he knows his way around that square set. Another duck underneath. And a takedown, but oh, just turned him loose. Kind of a show of injury. I don't know, more, more of an insult than really a show of uh, wrestling. Saying I could have taken it down, I could have followed it through, but chose not to for whatever reason. Now, of course, Roman took a lot with the roof. Single leg trick. What our figure four looks like? The plane got out of that one. He's definitely new to avoid that one. Saying, I got your number, Nate. Right, I'll tie up again. And now LaRue back. Look, look at it. Kind of a little tip for Tad here. As now McLean a single big trip and went for the figure four. Kind of anything you can do, I can do better. Another lock up. Side headlock by McLean. I have a feeling the rule won't stand. No, nope, not at all. Comes up with a top wrist lock. Single leg trip again. Nice takedown. Look at McLean. Look how he's keeping his shoulders up. Oh! That, that would have been quite painful. McLean did the wise thing and got out of the way. Again, I pointed out that bridge. Keeping his shoulders up. He knows what he's doing. He go behind. You want to go to the well too often. Come on, kid. And now LaRue comes up momentarily with that arm ringer. He goes behind his leg. Step back, take down, kick to the side. Now a chin lock applied, and look how quickly Dave McLean comes out the back door, comes up with a hammer lock. These guys aren't staying in these holes very long. Look at that. Reversal, reversal, and another reversal. We're seeing some great wrestling here, ladies and gentlemen. And Nate may actually be caught for the first time here. He's, oh, he just goes to the hair. Well, I guess if all else fails, that's what you do. Finally had a hole that was locked in pretty good. They couldn't escape, so he just went to the hair. The referee didn't even see it. Now the chin lock applied again. As Uru fights his way back to his feet. And again, going to the hair is Nate McClain. The ref may have seen him that time, as Nate is denying it. He saw what happened. And now the front face lock applied by the Super Verge, I mean, uh, Nate McClain. Trying to build up some energy as he fights his way back to his feet once again. Oh, but he got 
caught with that elbow. The crank quickly going for the cover, but does not hook the leg. And Maru able to kick out. And the reverse chin lock applied now. Does not hit the knee in the middle of the spine where he needs it for that hold to be effective. And Maru easily able to roll out of it. A couple of shots by LaRue. Running European uppercut in the corner. And he's not hit in the corner. Here he comes all the way across. Two knees to the kisser. Down for the cover. The left. One, two. But only a two count. Don't forget, whoever wins this goes to the main event in the four-way to challenge for the next gen championship. Ari Alexander has been at ringside watching these opening matches to see exactly who our opponents are going to be. Also to see any potential injuries in these matches. Always have to keep on it. Oh, wow! Like something like that. Big clubbing forearm by McLean. That's twice we've seen that steel post come into play in this tournament. Suplex coming up here, but oh, small package. One, two. Was a two count, but Nate, the referee actually started counting before Nate's shoulders were down on the mat. Not that the referee particularly likes Nate, but still, he got to call it by the book, like Mr. LaRue. I'm sure he wouldn't want to put in one like that anyway. Meanwhile, LaRue's still in control. Off the ropes. Running forearm. Thought he was going to go for the cover, but he did not. Yeah. Belly to back suplex did not quite get all of it. Not sure if he didn't have the energy anymore, or he did hit that steel post earlier. Maybe he's seeing a little, a few stars. to a side slam, almost got the victory. <laughs> Here's a chant of Virgin again from the crowd. So McLean's getting a little frustrated. He runs right into the loop. Gaston. It's caught by Lou's elbow. Now, can LaRue follow it up? Can he follow it up? One for the cover. I don't think that's gonna be enough. No, it was not. He definitely needed to follow that up with something. Doesn't look like he has the energy to it. All the shuffle there. Well, I don't know. Maybe that adrenaline's starting to pump. I don't know if I'd waste it showing off like that. As he's on the second rope again. He got caught that time. Wasted too much time. One, two. I can't believe it. He kicked out. I really thought that was it. Nate's got something else in store for him. Slay again. One, two. And he got him. Here is your winner. I'm embracing. Advancing to the finals in the main event. As Ari Alexander defends that next gen championship against three opponents. Look at that. Nick just throwing the rule book right on top of Gaston LaRue. Turtles in effect.
Here's some trash. In support of Ron Mathis. Not sure why he chooses the uh, moniker of pure trash. He is anything but trash inside that ring. One of the better wrestlers from the state of Ohio. Uh-oh. Gary Hillman snuck up from behind. What a shot by Matt. And a return by Gary. It looks like he may have hurt his hand. He calls it. Give me more. Oh, he wants more. Back and forth. Double chop by Matt. Mr. Pure Trash delivers that big right hand to Gandhi. And now up on the second rope. Delivering a series of right hands as the crowd chants along. Punches, you might as well uh, take a little bite out of the forehead while you're at it. I don't know. Maybe that's what he wants. And a big backdrop by Mathis. Yeah. Here he comes. Over at the opponent. Flex, it looks like. Yes, sir. Oh, he's holding him up there. Letting that blood rush to the brain. Oh, you must have a long time before letting him go. And Mathis looks like he's just having fun in there. Oh, he's gonna go follow him. Damn, he doesn't even know where he's at. Stand corrected. Playing possum was Gandhi, and he suckered him in. He fooled Mathis, he fooled me, he fooled everybody. And again, that's what a veteran can do. Now fighting all the way into the crowd. Uh oh, they're over at the bar now. Gandhi tried to plant Mathis into that bar, but Mathis put the brakes on him and Gandhi gets a kill. Well, Gandhi just been having his head rest on the bar. I hear he does drink quite a bit. Maybe passes out once in a while. And Mathis looking for more cheers from the crowd as he likes to feed off their energy. Oh! is getting a bird's eye view of the action. And now Mathis borrowing a megaphone from one of our crowd members. Finally back to the ringside area. frame of the ring, the apron, the hardest part, most unforgiving part of the entire ring. And now choking him on the ropes. Referee a little slow.
low, it's starting to count, but he did, he finally got the hole broken. Two of them still extending shots before Gandhi comes in with that shoulder block in the corner. Snap there, takes Mathis down. Chin lock applied. Referee asking, I don't think he's going to get a submission from Matt Bass. Not, not with a chin lock, I don't think. Going for a shoulder block, but as he ducked, he brought up the knee, caught him in a midsection. Wow, that could do it. One. Oh, only a one pass. Matha says, Don't count me out yet. Double axe handled by Gandhi. Side already. And now Gandhi's gonna follow him. Can't quite see around the referee. It looks like Mathis may have gone into that railing. Gandhi's asking the referee to count him out. And with the seven. Down up to eight. Is he gonna make it? Matthew, where's he going? Nine. Close! That was very, very close. And he thinks he won it. Two count only. Mathis almost counted out moments ago. And now fighting his way back. European uppercut by Portrait. Getting some energy from the crowd. Here he comes all the way to us, buddy. With that elbow. Danny up on the second row. But he came off and he got caught in a power slam. But can Mathis follow it up? Can he get that energy? Can he reach down deep enough? Can the crowd chant loud enough to give him the energy he needs? Gandhi is up first. Mathis up right behind him. He blocks Gandhi's attack. He delivers a couple of right hands on his own. Several forearm shots now. Mathis definitely in the better shape of the two right now. Mac 
Davis. Suicide dive to the outside. And some high fives to the crowd. of this match has taken place outside the ring. And now both men back in. Up on the shoulders of Mathis is good. Went for the headbreaker. Duplex by Dandy. Almost got Jackhammer over the Uber. Two. But it was not enough. said that suplex was almost a uh, jackhammer the way he turned his body and he turned it a bit more and landed on top of him. He may, he may have gotten him with that. As Math is only kicked out at the last moment. Oh, look at him. Yeah, he's hurting. If Gandy can follow it up with something devastating. Oh, he missed the answer guard. Up on the shoulders of Mathis again. That's got to do it. Kicked out! I can't believe it! Now fly the swinging neck breaker! I thought he had it! Matha thought he had it! The crowd thought he had it! But Candy said, I'm not finished! Don't tap me out! Looks like I'll hit him the pile driver! Matha's gone for this pile driver! And he manages to avoid it with a backdrop. Obviously, he's done his homework. And there's the Itzagari kick. Mantha's still on his feet. Nice foul. Gandy not going to recover immediately. Rest his head. Will that be enough? No. Gandy did not have enough energy to make a full cover. This match is coming down to whomever hits the next devastating move I think is going to be your victor. And Candy, it looks like he's in full control. But Mathis noticed that he says, come on, big man. He's not backing down for anything. Follows it up with a cold line. Where's this energy coming from? The pile driver! That's for the cover hooks the leg. One, two, he got him! Here's your winner, your champ, Ron Mabon! Ron Mabon's your winner here! Because he was in a battle tonight. But in the end, he proved he was just a bit more prepared than Danny. And on tonight, Mathis proved to be the better man. Oh, and he's feeling great. 
What a victory for Ron Mesa! Now that was a match.
Eric Christian jump up. To the man of shot of the KT 750. It's of course Rick and Gravy just won in our last event. But the board said, you have not earned a tag team championship match yet, but we'll give you a non-title match and a chance to earn a shot. So this is their opportunity. No gold on the line, but a chance to get a shot at the gold in the near future. Already uh, threatening with that thumb, and of course we know what he does with it. I don't know, is that, uh, is that where the name uh, Tom Thumb comes, with, comes from? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Oh, a little bit of a split crowd here. Rich and Gravy, Hard and Harry. Listening to the crowd here, literally split. Still waiting to get two individuals in the ring. No champion's advantage in this match. It's essentially just a tag team match. The only stipulation is that the Hart and Harry Express can indeed pull off a victory. They will be at the top of the game, or top of the line, I should say, for a tag team championship match. It's like everybody's getting along here. Bruce is ready to step out. No. Nope. He's going to be first. He's going to check out. And where did Tom McClain go? Well, they are close to a bar, but he does have a weakness for the spirits, but still. Oh, he's coming back, okay. <laughs> he lost his bandana. <laughs> I think you've got other things to be concerned about, so. Oh, well. If it helps him stay focused. You gotta be careful with that bandana. Well, obviously there's something special about that bandana. I'm not really sure what it is. So far, Tom McClain and Bruce Gray have both been talking. Does the ref check out everybody? I'm not sure. A lot of antics going on with Tom McClain, his bandana, and so forth. Oh well, the referee, I'm sure he's got everything under control. There's a big hug now by Hard and Harry Express. And a nice handshake by Grits and Gravy. A nice show of sportsmanship. <laughs> McClain got a little, uh, a little worried by the thumbs up. I, I, I don't think he meant it that way. Just, just, just. Nonetheless, you, you can't be too careful. 
There's the bell. This one officially underway. Like I said, you can't be too careful with Murray in that thumbs up. John Murray, the great American beast, starting off this match. Trying to get the fan of beast started. Haller now will tie up and Murray immediately displays his size and strength advantage. He comes up. Look at this lock. Look at that. The beast reverses it. Murray goes to the ropes. Nice clean break by the beast. And Murray again goes to the ropes. Again, off the rope. Carefully going over the top. Almost fell. Wiping oh, the brow of it. Mario. Gotta be careful. He's known for having the greatest balance. Oh, yeah, wipe that brow. <laughs> and again, the great American. Oh! Well, he got a stop. It's, uh, it would be a lot better than if, uh, let's say, Murray slipped when he tried to step over. Oh, yeah. the in the corner. By the... Tags made by both teams. Probably a good idea on the part of the beast after that avalanche from John Murray Pro. Bruce Gray, the ruler and master of the DDT. Awaiting the entrance of diehard Tom McClain. Who is really taking his time getting in the ring. He's going to show some energy. He wants to get a chance on the crowd going first. This time, Bruce Gray stops it. He gets a little bit better reaction from the crowd. They both had a split crowd earlier, and I think they're still kind of battling it out. Who's got more crowd support? It almost seems like the crowd support is more important to them than the, uh, the match itself at the moment. Ah, trying the old stuff, getting crowd time. Got a little bit of a response there. Tom McClain, he can do 
Because he's really grinding in that side. Also Went for a leapfrog, but didn't quite get high enough, and he came down right on my knee. Kind of a inverted atomic drop, if you will. Bruce Gray is on the second rope. And this time he gets caught with an inverted atomic drop. You've heard anything you can do, I can do better. It's, it's kind of any mistake you make, I can make too, I guess. Uh, you're both apologizing. Hey, man, uh oh. McLean was about to take a cheap shot. I thought they were buddies on the same page. Look at that, Murray. He's contemplating stepping in. He doesn't seem to trust him. Now, Bruce. And now the uh, trust seems to be breaking down here. Not arguing over. I mean, you were both going to take a cheap shot. I mean, what have you got to be angry about? And the partner's like, enough of this. We'll get in. Bruce is telling McLean he's lucky. Obviously, quite the animosity between the two. But Biggie's trying for a, a back suplex or something. Maybe an atomic drop, but unable to get the weight of John Murray up. And McLean coming in. Both of them together trying to. And they can't do it. John Murray put that double elbow. Right, the referee never uh, made a motion to get McLean out of there. If there was no tag. But I guess he didn't think there was anything McLean could have done on This week's not when it came to picking up John Murray. Murray who's just now being patient.
to do it. Unusual defense I've ever heard. Well, there's the music. Let's play it. In. Well, he's, he's uh, doing something. I guess you can call that dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, give him an A for effort. Bruce is gonna dance. I see a little more rhythm with him. Oh, he's into the music, all right.
capable challenger. Harley Team Morris kissing that championship, but he might be kissing it goodbye. As he hands it to the referee, who shows it to the challenger, touches it for good luck. And he will need good luck because Harley Team Morris is no slouch in that ring. This could prove to be quite a match. Obviously, the size advantage goes to Saturn Price, although I am not sure what his experience level is and how it compares to Harley T. Morris. That is the unknown factor in this match, as far as my own experience with these two individuals. I'm sure there are many others who know these two and have followed them much longer. But as far as Actual in-ring skill, I will have to go with Harley T. Morris. But again, size and strength will have to go to Saturn Price. Right now, Morris is more concerned with a fan who's got a megaphone than he is about his opponent. Fortunately for him, uh, Saturn is simply content to sit back and wait his turn any energy because the gold is on the line and what is so important about that King of the Valley championship is you can turn it in anytime and demand a championship match against the XVW heavyweight champion and in fact as far as I know against any champion you wish in this 
Although obviously the most prestigious of all is the XVW Heavyweight Championship, which will be defended later on tonight here at XVW Holiday Final. We are in Odd Bodies Music Room here in Dayton, Ohio. This is our first event of the year. And it's been full of a lot of surprises thus far. I still can't believe what we saw with that tag team match. Between Grits and Gravy and the Heart and Harry Express. Well, they wanted their title shot and they got it. Can't say I agree with their tactics, but it paid off. And now we have a title match right now. King of the Valley title on the line. On the team horse. Working on the left arm of the challenger. And Price just pulls him into a side headlock. Just powered him in that way. Horse looked like he might have been going for the hair of it, but thought better of it. Over the mid section, gets him. Look at that. He just, just popped out the back door, went behind, and then applied a side headlock of his own. And Saturn just, which way should I send him? Take the side. Here he comes. Shoulder block takes down the champion. What happened, he says. Blocked. A second attempt by the champion. Price using that weight advantage. And now hands him up. Side suplex perhaps. Well, so far we've seen the champion attempting to use his wrestling skills. But thus far has not been able to overcome the size advantage of the, ch of the challenge. The challenge has shown that he's got some wrestling skills as well. And he's got that expanding wrist lock. But look at that. The champion going to the pair. Harley likes to claim he's a professional, but he's not above taking a cheap shot and bending the rules every now and then. Steps to the outside. Wow, nicely done. He managed a chicken wing. Price on that top, excuse me, that second rope. He got a shot in and before the referee even had a chance to say anything. He knows how to work on the joints, every part of the body. And notice he continues to work on that left arm. Working on that elbow and now drops that knee on it. That's the same elbow. With that chicken wing on that middle rope just moments ago. That's what we talked about earlier. Taking a part of the body and continuing to work on it. Wear your opponent down. That's what you have to do, and that's exactly what Morris is doing. And you can just see the pain. You can hear the cries of pain from Saturn Price. but he missed a second time. Ice with a boot. You can see he's favoring the arm. Sent time bomb by the challenger. Goes for a cutoff. Barely able to hook the leg. Normally he would have hooked it with that left arm. He had to roll over on his back to use the right arm. The champion has done a number on that left elbow thus far. Look at that. Working on 
on both of the elbows. Yeah. Of the champion, Ifed's top. You can see that arm is still in a lot of pain. It has definitely affected the efficiency of the attack of Saturn. He's still fighting. Oh, oh, look at that. He couldn't even do it because of the arm. Side brush and leg sweep by the champion. Down for the cover. It's the leg one, two. Only a two down. Looking worse for the worse for the wear. Trying to focus attack low, but it didn't do any good. And again, the champion going right back to work on that left elbow. thing you want to do now is, is change your focus of attack. Pulls the champion off the ropes. Who goes face first into that top ten ball and becomes the challenger. Booted to the corner. He's only got one arm right, but he's fighting with it. Oh, but still got a two count. Obviously, he landed that boot well, and even prior to that, when that champion came down hard, face first into that top turnbuckle. on those two buckle pads. I mean, there's a large steel bolt underneath that. But when you come down hard enough, you're going to... Uh-oh, the champion needs to slip out the back door. And he brings it over. And he drops back with that arm. And his elbow is not supposed to bend that way. Hooks the leg. One, two, whoa! Two and a half. And he's trying to apply the cross arm breaker, but the challenger holding on to it and not allowing it to happen. I don't know if he's got the strength to pull him up. He's trying to pull him up into a vertical position, but I don't think that was going to happen. That's the shape of Zelda. Spine Buster! Down for the cover, hooks the leg. One, two, he got him! Here's your winner, and still, King of the Valley champion, Holy T. Moran! Holy T. Moran, retaining the championship. Got in price and a lot of things. A hard fought battle, but how much can you do when you really only have one arm? Nonetheless, you will victor here tonight, Harley T. Morris, who will continue to reign.
Jesus for another day. Oh, look at that. He's so proud of himself. And Terry Saturn will have the fighters, excuse me, Saturn fight will have the fighters way back up. The number one contendership for the championship is the Wonder Miller Champ. Who wins at SBW King of a Valley Champ? We have so much more to come.
IBW Heavyweight Championship on the line. And there you see champion Amos handing that belt over as he takes a close look at the man across the ring, Matt Vengeance. A man with many years of experience. He knows every trick in the rule book. And he knows how to break every rule in the rule book. Scotty the Young Champion. Still learning with each and every day. Every moment he's in that ring, but he's accomplished so much. And he continues to get every what did I what did I tell you? And somebody continues to learn at a regular pace. They continue to surprise you with each and every match. And that vengeance didn't even see that coming. Look at the way Amos is focused on that left arm. He's got it wrapped up good. He's got it wrapped up with his leg, so his arms are free. Nice roll with that. One, two. Oh, big smile on the face of Amos. Telling Matt that he's got his number. Like I said, don't count Benjamin's out. A man with his level of experience has plenty of tricks up his sleeve. Collar and elbow tie up right now. Did you see that? Just as Vengeance was about to throw him off, Scotty dropped to one knee, ducked underneath, and came out from behind. Look at that! What a great series of maneuvers! And Vengeance staying cool. A little aggravated, perhaps, but showing no sign of frustration. Keeping the pace slow. That's the name of the game. Don't play your opponent's game. Make them play yours. If the pace got too fast, Vengeance slowed it down. And that's the mark of eventually. Amos now continues to go to work on that left arm. Of course, that's been a theme throughout this night. Pick a part of the body and stay on it. That's exactly what the champion is doing. Oh, wow. Oh, he's going for a snap there, but he just dropped on one knee. Caught that jaw on his shoulder. And that's the experience factor coming into play. The weight has got that neck wrench on. Just a few moments ago, and he hit his fingers in the eyes, but the champion had to point it out to the rough way because Vengeance hit it so well. And again, as I said, he knows all the tricks that are and aren't in the book. And he's not, a, he's not above using them. Blayton choke in the corner. Breaking at the count of four, that's what you have to do. I hate to say it, but the rule book says you can choke to the count of four. A lot of guys take advantage of that, like it or not. Vengeance again, choking, this time on the second rope. Talked about the pace of the match earlier. Scotty worked at a faster pace, Matt at a slower pace. And if you can make your opponent fight your game, you've got an advantage. And that's exactly what Vengeance is doing. As he sends the champion in the corner and he hit hard. Stomp to the back. That's a four arm in and now. Benjamin, so he's taking the time to go across. And look, that's it. He's going 
Uh oh. Lucky he landed on his knees first. I thought he was going to face first into the mat. As Vengeance rakes the boot across the eyes. I'm not even sure. Amos can see after that. Look at Yeah, he barely connected with that fist. He's not seeing too clearly. But he knows where he is now. Send him the teleporter. And catches Amos coming back in with that elbow. And the champion is once again on the mat. And another choke by Vengeance. Back of his head, it looks like. Couldn't quite see from my vantage point. It's like a couple paintbrush shots to the back of the cranium. I'm only gonna do a damage. He just insulted him a bit, but I don't know. The champion looks like he probably didn't even notice. Oh, he's staggering big time. Very light uh, clothesline there. Oh! Oh! Wow! When, when the champion went down, his foot came... Oh, wow! A pure coincidence, but... I, 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 that, that's one thing I don't think is in the rule book or the book of tricks or whatever. I've never seen that before in my life. Champion comes back with a back elbow. Oh, right across the back. I thought he was going for my own move. Up on the shoulders of Amos. His vengeance. As he tried to put him to sleep. He says that's it, but he's not going for the cover. He's waiting for him. I don't know, I probably would have gone for the cover. Spinning heel kick. Took too much time. Vengeance now driving several shoulders into the midsection in the corner. Hey, charging in, but the champion sidestepped him. As Vengeance crashed into the corner, I hit up the champion. Oh, wow. Vengeance being disqualified for that low blow. I don't know, perhaps he thought he was uh, entitled to some uh, payback after what happened earlier with that mishap. But that was unintentional on the part of the champion. What Vengeance did was blatant. And now as a result of that low blow, that Champion is down on the mat. Vengeance is serious. Nonetheless, you're still your champion. The prophet of pain, Ava. And here comes Vengeance. Well, the damage has been done. Amos wants his championship belt. There it is. Well, that's not the kind of victory he wanted. But you are victor nonetheless and still champion. Johnny Amos.
Nation for Ari Alexander. The reigning and defending next gen champion. And here's something we have to remember. She's facing three opponents. And any one of them could win the championship, and she doesn't even have to get in. Let's say if Nate McClain were to pin Jaden Jett, he would become the champion. And he would not have even beaten Ari Alexander. Just in time. To 
say for championship because I think that one was Jet had to come back in earlier than he wanted to make that, make that save, or his hopes of going home with the gold were gone. And a knee left. Another knee left. Wow. Not a lot of weight behind that, but still, the shoulder's not supposed to bend that way. Profit. Feeling that he needed to break it up, but all he already kicked out is Jaden didn't even hook the leg. Profit came in and was ready to go like a ball of fire, not realizing what shape Jaden Jet was already in. Hey, but you gotta be prepared, that's what you have to do. Did you see the height on that crossbody block? Oh, and Ari tried to make a save, didn't make it. She's actually lucky that Jaden Jett kicked out. Otherwise, her title would have been gone. And that's what we talked about earlier. Losing the belt with somebody else getting pinned. Now all four combatants in the ring. Suplexing all three of them. More like German, German suplexes, in fact. Wait, wait. You see that chain? Yes! He got that chain in, and Ari uses it now. This is a fatal four way, no disqualification. Caught when they brought it in, but all he took advantage of might have been the end of Nate McClain. But she still has two other challengers she has to face. Oh! Now that was a serious backbreaker. One, two, and somehow Profit kicks out. And Jaden Jett kicks out as well. Oh, he says, I don't care. I'll pin either one of them. I think she's going to have to do something else. But not, not that. The referee was making the count, Ari. We need to follow up. Using the steel pose, well, that's something else to do. That'll definitely have some effect. That steel post, that same one, the same point of the ring. Coming to play several times throughout tonight's event. And now Charles comes to the cover. Already kicking out even before two. There's the arm bar. That's what Coffin is known for. Already manages to pick out one, two. Over by the champion. Oh, wow! I didn't know the human body could bend that way. She got on.
but nonetheless we say that it is Ari Alexander. What an event we had here tonight. SPW Holiday Hangover. I hope everybody had happy holidays. Happy New Year's again to everybody. And we will see you back here on January 15th at Our Buddies Music Room in Dayton, Ohio. For SPW, I'm the boss of pro wrestling saying so long from ringside. Till next time, my friend.